child stop and frisk on trial, we will hear from the attorney for the plaintiffs. And next, Christine Quinn flip-flops on paid sick leave. Is her shift all about the race for mayor? And later, what's the best way to bounce back from a fall from grace? Did Petraeus get it right? Good evening and welcome to RFL. I'm Dominic Carter in tonight for Richard French, and we begin with Stop and Frisk. Testimony continued today in the case that has the attention of New York City. At issue was whether or not the NYPD's controversial policing tactic is used in a discriminatory manner. It was a short day at the courthouse today as they adjourned early for Good Friday. This as we spoke with Jonathan Moore, the lawyer for the four men suing the NYPD. Week number two is now officially over, but the biggest headline to come from this trial thus far uh, would be the comments of Deputy Inspector McCormick in which he was caught secretly on tape, you know what the quote is, saying to quote, stop the right people at the right location the right time, male black between 14 and 21. That's the quote, counselor, that grabbed all the headlines. But McCormick also said in the same recording, 99% of the people in that Bronx community are great, hardworking people who deserve to walk to the train, walk to their car, walk to the store without becoming crime victims. Is racial profiling so easily defined? I don't think it's necessarily easily, easily defined. It's, and it's also, of course, not necessarily an easy thing to prove, particularly when you're dealing with such a large agency like the uh, New York City Police Department. Really what the case is about is racial stereotyping. Um, and uh, I think the comment of uh, Deputy Inspector McCormick reflects that um, in his judgment, and, and he said, I don't have, I'm not, I'm not going to be, uh, I'm not ashamed to say it, I said it at the roll call, in his judgment, the, the right people at the right time and the right location are male blacks 14 to 20, 21. And that's his words. He's the deputy inspector. He's the commander of the troops in that precinct, in the 40th precinct. Um, you know, uh, we can't wait to hear how he's going to try to justify that. Um, they could say all they want that 99% of the people in that community are hardworking people, and that's probably true. But so why are they stopping so many people if 99% of them are hardworking people? Why are the numbers so high? Why are uh, why are they stopping 600,000 people uh, a year in New York uh, with this practice of stop, question, and frisk? Uh, if 99% of the community is, you know, hardworking people, um, so that's the question I would ask. Well, Counselor, uh, Inspe Deputy Inspector McCormick's comments, uh, as you know, made page one world edition of the New York Times. But Police Commissioner Ray Kelly yeah. says McCormick was taken out of context. Your reaction? Well, I, you know, it's his words. It's not us, somebody saying that that's what he said in a, you know, a he said, she said kind of thing. Those are his words on tape. Those are his words, and they're very loud and clear. You didn't even need a transcript to see, to understand what he was saying. And, you know, it was in the context of, of a conversation about, well, who do you want me to stop? Uh, go stop every black and Latino male in the, uh, that I come across? And he was very clear. He, he said, you know, not everyone, just the ones who were 14 to 21, male black, uh, Hispanic, uh, uh, male Hispanics. Uh, in the context of Mott Haven, be mostly male blacks. So um, that's what's troubling. Um, that's not out of context. And you heard the entire evaluation of, uh, of uh, Officer Serrano. We didn't excerpt it at all. It was about an 18-minute uh, conversation. And uh, that's what it ended up being. How high is the threshold sure. to prove your case to Judge Scheinland? And what exactly do you want to see in terms of the outcome? Well, we'd like to see an effective uh, a set of policies and practices where the police department can utilize stop and frisk in a legal and constitutional way. This case is not about abolishing stop and frisk. Stop and frisk is the law of the land. It's uh, approved by the Supreme Court in Terry versus Ohio. When they, we've never said, and we don't say in this case, we've never said that we want to abolish stop and frisk. We just want it to be done in a legal and constitutional way. So that's what our goal is. 
We are going to take a short break now, but when we return, we'll ask the founder of the Guardian Angels, Curtis Sliwa, if he thinks the city will see more crime if stop and frisk is changed. Stay with us. <laughs> 